We're gonna we're gonna go into the the, the, the pickup system, which is a, it's called the expression system. This was developed in 2003, and uh, any boiler makers here? Anybody go to Purdue? There's one. Okay. Uh, we actually this this started. Uh, when when uh, Bob Taylor, David Hosler, and I were talking about there must be a better way to, to amplify an acoustic guitar. For years, the traditional uh, method was to put a, a piezo or piezo uh, element underneath the saddle and run it out to some sort of a preamp and, and amplify the guitar. Now, the problem with a piezo or piezo pickup is it works in, like a giant thumbprint, impressing its sound all over your guitar. You didn't matter if you had a $300 guitar or a $3,000 guitar, they all pretty much sounded the same with a piezo pickup. We wanted to capture all the expression of each of us as players, our bone tone, and we wanted to capture the expression of different body shapes and different wood combinations. So the, we, we, we set out on a project to, fig, to work on that. Right about the same time we were starting, Purdue University called us, Dr. Mark French, and he said, hey, I have an idea. I want to, to, to borrow a guitar and I want to shoot some lasers at it and uh, tell you why it sounds the way it sounds. And we're, you know, R&D, we're like, woohoo, lasers, let's blow up some guitars. <laughs> He's like, no, 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 no. We're going to you know, measure micro vibration. And so, uh, so we, we, we set up, he, they came on out, brought their lasers. We, you, know, you set up a guitar in a, in a specialized chamber, you whack it with a velocity hammer that's connected to a computer. And then the lasers measure all the vibrations as it happens. So many unique things you discover. One, sound as, it, uh, as, the, as the top vibrates. And you know, a guitar makes sound, the, the sound comes off of the top. Doesn't, it's not coming through here. This is just a vent. The vent it, it's allowing air to, to move in and out as the top moves up and down, rocks side to side and backward and forward. The sound of a guitar comes off the top of the guitar. So that's why they call it a soundboard, if you've ever heard that, that term. So as we studied what the, what the lasers told us, we re, you realize that nodes form where energy gathers, then they release, and it kind of moves around the top in a clockwise fashion. That's where you get this whole sustain and bloom and overtones happen as nodes build up and release across the top over time. So we knew we wanted to capture all that micro vibration over time. So then it was like, all right, how are we going to do this? Well, we scratched our head for about 20 minutes and we went, micro vibration. Wait a minute, we're from California. We're experts in micro vibration. It happens every day, all day long. We have earthquakes. And Caltech measures, you know, you got the big ones that move you, but every day there's tiny, you know, hundreds of tiny earthquakes that nobody ever feels. So the way that they measure those are with a, a device called an accelerometer. And an accelerometer is a little contact device that you know, it sits on the ground tr traditionally, but uh, for us, we, did, we redesigned it to go on the back of the guitar top. And so it's a magnet in a little container surrounded by a coil mounted to the top of the guitar. In our case, we put the magnet in a little container of ferrofluid. It's magnetic fluid. So that means the magnet cannot hit the sides can't hit the top or the bottom, it just stays in free suspension in this little cup. You surround that cup with a coil, and now when the, when the magnet moves within the coil, it creates electronic disturbance, makes signal. All right, so now we had a way to capture micro vibration. We wanted to figure out where do we put them? And we wanted to, to capture this, this node build up and release over time. So we put them on two different places on the guitar. There's one here behind the bridge, one up here. See, if you turn around, you see them in, in our stunt guitar here. So, I have to give you the corny jokes. We've done 120 of these shows. People always will ask, when they're looking at prices of a guitar, well, which one is half off? <laughs> <laughs> and then, then somebody wise can say, well, yeah, but how's that one sound? It's opened up nicely. <laughs> okay. Got that out of my system. So, uh, so with, the, with the two dynamic body sensors, we added the third string sensor that, that is hidden in the neck joint. It's up here under the last fret. So there's three pickups in the guitar. Now, the next fun thing was Bob said, well, you know, you got three pickups. What are you going to do? We're like, we want to mix them. So we thought long and hard, who is our, you know, if we needed somebody that was an expert in mixing. Well, of course, we're beetle nuts. And 
The guy that made the consoles that all the Beatle records were recorded on was a guy named Rupert Neve. He's an audio legend in the, in the design world. You hear Neve mic preamps and uh, uh, you know, Neve consoles. And so we're like, hey, let's find Rupert Neve. He must be you know, somewhere. Once we figure out he's still alive, turns out he lives in Wimberley, Texas. And uh, a plane trip to, to, to Wimberley, some barbecue and, uh, and beers out at, at his back porch, flew him to, to San Diego, some more barbecue, more Connery Asada actually, I think, than, than barbecue. And, uh, and uh, a, a year later, we had a preamp designed by the, the preeminent designer of, of mixing consoles uh, that mixed our, our micro vibration sources and captured all the nuance of the guitar. The ultimate end goal and what we achieved was a guitar that sounds like the guitar you're playing and the person who's playing it when it's plugged in. That's the expression system. It, has a, it had a major redesign in 2006. Uh, after three years old, um, we decided that, that all the people in Europe would like to have this as well, and we had to comply with the restriction of hazardous substances uh, standards for, for Europe. It's Ross and also we. Evidently, uh, they were concerned that people would be throwing their guitars away when they were done with them. <laughs> and so they have a rule that says if you're going to have electronics in anything, it has to be uh, landfill friendly. Totally understood. So that meant that everything had to, to go to lead free. So no lead in the solder, uh, no lead in the components themselves. So the leads coming out of resistors and capacitors, everything had to be lead free. So that uh, allowed us to, three years into it, kind of redesign uh, the system, update it to, to use all compliant components. At that time, we, we sweetened up the top end a little bit, and we changed the, the power supply to a 9-volt battery. Amen. The other big change was we finally were granted a patent that can save your life. Anybody ever gigged with an electric guitar, grabbed the microphone, and had the blue spark? <laughs> Somebody had to have had that, right? The blue spark. That happens when the guitar you're holding and the PA system are on different circuits with a different ground path. And you're, it's actually puts you in harm's way. 50 people have died holding an electric guitar, grabbing a microphone that's got a, a, a circuit on a different phase or a ground issue. And we, when we originally did the system, we were not going to be responsible for killing someone's daddy. And so. Uh, we waited and, and researched and researched and researched until we found a way to do that. We have a fuse protected string ground now. What that means is if you're ever in, the, in that rare instance where uh, the lethal voltage is present that could potentially kill you, the fuse in the system will pop and it'll, it'll stop the current from going through your body and the guitar will still play, it'll still make sound. Uh, but it might be susceptible to, to some induced noise. You'll know if the fuse blew because one, you're not dead, and two, uh, it might there might be a little noise in the system. It's easily replaced uh, here at the store. You just pull the, the battery box out. The, the fuse is actually uh, in a little solderless push-in connector. So it's inside the guitar, but we just you know slide the battery, the power supply out. It's easily changed. Um, but it, it will save you in, in, in the case of potential lethal voltage.